a silent tug from the stars. Have you ever looked at the night sky and felt something indescribable, a pull not just of awe, but of memory? As if the stars weren't just out there, but also in here, stitched into your very cells. What if that feeling isn't imagination, but ancient resonance? What if your DNA is a cosmic echo? Today, on Dark Matter Diaries, we journey into the mystery of memory coded in biology and broadcast by the universe. This is a voyage through astrophysics, cellular biology, and sacred texts, where we ask, are we remembering something we've never been told? This isn't just a theory. It's a call to reawaken our connection with the womb of the cosmos. And it begins, as always, with a paradox, the cosmic code and the blueprint of life. Let's begin at the intersection of structure and silence, DNA and the universe. Both are coiled systems of information. Both guide form. Both are unreadable to the naked eye. And yet both dictate existence. DNA contains over three billion base pairs forming a language of life. But here's the twist. Over 98% of this genetic code has no known function. Scientists once called it junk DNA. But many now believe it holds deeper instructions, epigenetic codes, ancestral memory, even vibrational responses to environment. Similarly, over 95% of the universe is dark, dark matter and dark energy. We can't see them, yet they define everything. They bend galaxies, influence the cosmic web, shape time itself. The majority of existence, both biologically and cosmologically, is hidden yet foundational. So the question arises, is the junk in us responding to the dark out there? The Human Genome Project gave us a map, but not the full terrain. Like dark matter, the non-coding regions of DNA may influence form, experience, and possibly memory. Not the memory of events, but of essence. An ancient memory. A cosmic one. The harmonics of the void modern string theory suggests that all particles are vibrations of one-dimensional strings. Essentially, the universe is a song. A frequency soup. Sound in ancient traditions is the creative force. In the beginning was the word, says the Gospel of John. Om, say the Upanishads. Creation begins with sound. So does consciousness. In the vacuum of space, there is no sound in the traditional sense. But quantum fields still vibrate. The universe hums silently, an orchestra without air. Scientists have even detected primordial waves, ripples from the early universe, echoing through the cosmic microwave background. Now bring this to the body. Researchers like Dr. Luc Montagnier have proposed that DNA can emit and receive electromagnetic signals. Could this mean your cells resonate with universal frequencies? Imagine your DNA not as a code to be read, but an instrument to be played. And the universe? The orchestra? And here's the wild thought. What if your resonance with a specific frequency unlocks memories, not from your past, but from the collective? From the cosmos? From the stars? Memory beyond blood? Let's talk about ancestral memory. Studies in epigenetics show that trauma can be inherited. Holocaust survivors' descendants show altered cortisol levels. Mice conditioned to fear a smell pass that fear on genetically. If trauma is stored biologically, could wonder be too? Could reverence, awe, and even memory of cosmic origins be embedded into our genes? Ancient civilizations aligned temples with stars, Egyptian pyramids with Orion's belt, Mayan pyramids with Venus cycles. These weren't coincidences. They were cosmic memories carved in stone. These alignments are not isolated. Aboriginal songlines map stars with uncanny precision. Native American medicine wheels reflect celestial configurations. Dogon tribes in Mali knew about Sirius B, an invisible star, before Western science confirmed it. And here's the riddle. How did they know? Is it possible that some deep, dormant strand of our being remembers the stars because we come from them? Not metaphorically, but literally. Stardust and sacred texts. Carl Sagan famously said, we are made of star stuff. Supernovae forge elements like carbon, nitrogen and oxygen, essential to life. 
You, me, and everyone we know are built from the death of stars. Now weave in scripture, Genesis says humanity was formed from dust. Hinduism describes the soul as a spark from the divine flame. The Egyptian Book of the Dead speaks of returning to the stars after death. The Torah speaks of breath of life as divine code. Are these metaphors? Or metaphysical truths science is only now beginning to measure? When ancient texts speak of the heavens, they often speak in the language of lineage. Could this be why humanity has always looked up, not just for navigation, but for identification? Our ancestors knew something. Their myths weren't just stories. They were memory maps. Cosmic genealogies. Dark matter. Light consciousness. Dark matter is gravitational glue. We can't see it, but it sculpts galaxies. Scientists believe it interacts weakly with ordinary matter. But what if it interacts strongly with something else? Consciousness. Some speculative physicists propose that consciousness may be a quantum field. If so, perhaps our awareness isn't a local event in the brain, but a tuning fork that responds to the deeper hum of the cosmos. Think of meditation. The brain moves into alpha and theta waves, states where the self dissolves and the field becomes perceivable. Many mystics describe these states as communion with the divine or cosmic intelligence. What if dark matter, pervasive, invisible, but necessary, is the medium through which consciousness emerges? In this case, consciousness isn't in the body. The body is in consciousness. And that consciousness might remember. DNA as receiver, not just blueprint. The mainstream sees DNA as a static instruction set. But fringe science and ancient esotericism suggest something more dynamic. Russian biophysicist Pyotr Gargayev proposed that DNA can be reprogrammed with words and frequencies. His controversial work hinted that genetic material might respond to spoken language, like ancient chants or mantras. If true, this means language isn't just communication, it's activation. And DNA isn't just hardware, it's a living antenna. Consider Tibetan chants, Gregorian hymns, tribal dances, what if these aren't just rituals, but resonance tools? What if they activate memory in our DNA, awakening dormant knowledge? Perhaps this is why initiations and rites exist, to retune us to cosmic frequencies. The more aligned we are, the more we remember. The baby, the star, and the spiral back to the personal. Imagine a newborn, eyes wide, breath new, skin still holding the warmth of the womb. Their DNA is untouched, but it carries echoes both of ancestors and starlight. They sleep curled like galaxies. Their eyes seek faces like stars in a sky. Their brains pulse in theta waves, the same frequency observed in deep meditation. Are they remembering something we've forgotten? Children draw spirals before they write letters. Spirals appear in galaxies, fingerprints, shells and hurricanes. The spiral is the shape of unfolding. Is it coincidence that DNA is also a double helix, a double spiral? Maybe the spiral is the memory. A looping pattern that links the origin with the observer. Reawakening the inner cosmos, let's flip the lens. Instead of searching the stars for origin stories, what if we searched ourselves? Practices like yoga, breathwork and deep silence have long been thought to activate spiritual DNA. Could these be forms of cosmic resonance tuning? When you align your breath, mind, and heart, are you sinking with something larger? Some call it God. Others call it Source. Science calls it the unified field. What if all three are describing the same thing? A womb beyond time. A vibration older than light. We are taught to look out. But mystics, scientists, and poets agree the journey is inward. And perhaps that journey is the remembrance. The great return in myth, we always return. To Eden. To Source. To Light. The journey outward is the illusion. The journey inward is the truth. Our DNA spirals like galaxies. Our brains echo the structure of the universe. Our hearts beat in fractal patterns. This isn't coincidence. It's choreography. We are instruments. The cosmos is singing. The question is, will we remember the tune? 
and maybe remembering isn't just nostalgia. Maybe it's activation, a calling back to form, to function, to purpose. This is not just evolution. It's return, not regression, but revelation. What unknown should we explore next? What if every cell in your body is a star map? What if your dreams are echoes of nebula? What if memory is not confined to the brain, but inscribed in every curve of your being? This isn't just science. It's sacred. It's speculative. It's the next page of the diary. This is Dark Matter Diaries. And we're just getting started.